Welcome back. We are now busy with our second last unit, Unit 10, Insurance Arrangements of a Fund. Uh, this is still part of Class of Business 4, Retirement Fund Benefits. Um, insurance Arrangements of Funds. Here we need to understand the benefit of group cover, discuss the concept of self-assurance versus insurance, understand the tax consequences of approved and unapproved group life cover, and be able to discuss briefly the disability benefit options available to an employer. Uh, some of this is a bit of a repeat and or a summary of what we've discussed very uh, earlier in our session. Uh, let's have a look at benefits of group cover. Group insurance cover is a concept whereby an insurer offers an insurance cover to a group of individuals under one policy. The benefits in terms of the contract are generally the same for all individuals covered in terms of that contract or within the categories of individuals covered in terms of that contract. Uh, if we look at self-insurance versus insurance, self-insurance is a practice where a fund sets aside a calculated amount of money to compensate for a potential future loss, which means that they self-insure, they make the money available, they don't make use of uh, any cover. Uh, insurance implies the payment of an agreed premium to an insurance company uh, that will then cover the benefit uh, that may arise in terms of the agreed policy. Uh, what is the tax consequences of an approved versus an unapproved group life cover? Approved group life cover policies are used to provide benefits through the retirement fund itself. Uh, it, in terms of these policies, the retirement fund is the beneficiary owner of the policy and all the benefit payments are subject then to Section 37C of the Pension Funds Act. Whereas an unapproved policy are used to provide benefits outside of the retirement fund and are usually owned by the employer, a common reason for an unapproved contract is to ensure that the benefits are paid out tax-free uh, and therefore they are not subject to uh, Section 37 of the Pension Funds Act. Um, then lastly, we'll discuss the disability benefit option available to an employer briefly. Uh, disability benefits provide for employees who are no longer able to earn a living during becoming either temporary or uh, permanently disabled. Uh, disability benefits could either be provided uh, on a salary replacement basis, for an example, the disabled member earns, let's say, 75% of his salary or as a lump sum benefit. For example, the disabled member will receive a lump sum of, let's say, three times the annual salary. This concludes our session on insurance arrangements of a fund, which was a very brief session, but it was just to highlight um, these aspects that we can add also to a pension fund. Uh, then we will uh, continue... Uh, to unit 11, which is the industry role players. I'm not going to switch uh, this session off, but let's uh, just finish up uh, with unit 11, where we will discuss the industry role players and their role. Right, the members or beneficiaries. The members is the central part of all these arrangements. Therefore, the focus should be ensuring that the members is empowered to understand the benefits and make the necessary decisions. There is no point in entering all these complex arrangements but leaving out a critical component. The fund communication policy should therefore be strengthened to empower the members and beneficiaries to make the right decisions along the way so that the overall objectives of the fund is achieved. Trustees should consider seriously engaging with members on a regular basis. I mean, they form the basis of your fund. The Board of Trustees, the Board of Trustees as a role player is the ultimate decision making, having overall responsibility for strategic decisions such as setting the investment policy, choosing investment managers and other service providers and reviewing the fund's performance. The Board of Trustees is equivalent to the Board of Directors of a company which has the ultimate responsibility for protecting the shareholders' assets, uh, which are the beneficiaries in this instance. The central role played by the Board of Trustees is ensuring good governance and raising value for all the stakeholders. 
the success of the fund is therefore directly linked with the quality of board in charge of the affairs of the fund. The board of trustees roles and responsibilities we have fully covered. Uh, it is also however imperative that as the driver of the fund, the board of trustees is at all times fully uh, constituted and has the necessary skill set to enable efficient and effective decision making. Uh, the board of trustees is also responsible for appointing of all other role players that manage the fund. The board should therefore be fully accountable for all decisions to ensure that all decisions are made in the best interest of the fund members. As custodians of the fund assets, the board of trustees must ensure that governance mechanisms are put in place to ensure that fund assets are safe and grow at optimum levels whilst managing the fund's exposure. And being a trustee is an onerous task that should be taken very seriously. Right, let's look at the principal officer as one of the role players, uh, Section 8 of the Pension Funds Act. In terms of the Pension Funds Act, every fund must have a principal officer. The board of a fund is responsible for the appointment of a principal officer and must ensure that a appointee has the relevant qualification and expertise relating to the management and oversight of retirement funds, specifically to the particular office and type of funds in question, is fit and proper to hold such an appointment and has been informed of his or her duties and responsibilities in terms of the applicable legislation. Uh, the principal officer uh, must also be once the board of a fund is satisfied that an appointee meets all the above uh, requirements uh, and criteria, the board must notify the registrar of the appointment by completing uh, the appropriate forms. The principal officer being an appointed officer of the fund in the same way as the trustees and being a person in a position of trust has very similar fiduciary duties. The principal officer of a registered fund shall be an individual who is a resident of the Republic of South Africa. A registered fund may appoint a deputy principal officer. Suppose a fund has appointed a deputy principal officer. In that case, the deputy principal officer acts as the principal officer um, as and when the principal officer is absent from the Republic or unable to, for any reason, discharge of their duties as a principal officer. Uh, because the principal officer must sign certain fund documents in his capacity as principal officer, he or she may not be appointed as chairperson of the board of trustees. However, the principal officer is not precluded from acting as an ordinary member elected or employer appointed trustee. The principal officer's duties and functions other than those specifically provided in the act are determined by the fund rules. To a large degree. The principal officer uh, can be li uh, likened to a company secretary in many respects and is usually an uh, authorized signatory. All general fiduciary duties applicable to trustees apply equally to the principal officer. The principal officer plays a pivotal role in the fund. For this reason, the principal officer must have a very thorough knowledge of the fund and its administration as well as of the Act, its regulations, and any other applicable regulations. But another role player is the chairperson of the Board of Trustees. Uh, the rules specifically specify who chairs the meeting and who sim simply provide that the trustees shall decide at each meeting who will carry out that role. The following are the key roles of the chairperson. Uh, proactively lead the board impartially and without bias to a to any party, uh, confirms the agenda for the board meetings and review draft minutes of such meetings, ensure that the business stated on the agenda is completed, manage board meetings to ensure that sufficient time is allowed for discussion of complex or contentious issues, uh, ensure formal and regular performance reviews of the board, the subcommittees and the principal officers are conducted, uh, meet regularly with the principal officer to monitor the, uh, the operations of the fund, act 
as a spokesperson for the fund and proactively raise issues of concern on behalf of the board, the sponsors, the employer, the administrator and other service providers. Uh, if the rules provide for majority voting, uh, the chairperson will usually be given a casting vote uh, if the votes are tied. Right, then another role player is your investment or asset manager. Uh, the investment manager must ensure that the assets are managed according to the mandate uh, agreements, uh, considering all legal requirements, record keeping and international best practices, and that trustees receive regular reports. Uh, the most important duty of the investment manager is to ensure that the fund's assets are invested in such a way that optimum returns subject to acceptable uh, risks are achieved. This means that the investment manager in conjunction with the board of trustees must seek an investment portfolio that offers high return while keeping risk factors within acceptable limits and keeps the funds uh, suitably liquid so that it has money readily available to pay benefits and as and when required. Uh, in determining the type of investments in which to uh, invest the fund assets, the investment manager must have regards to the fund's objectives, the need for diversification, the need for cash flow, the membership and demographic profile of the fund, and also the size of the fund. Uh, the investment manager is also responsible for understanding the fund's objectives and providing asset management which he believes will satisfy those objectives in form of optimum return. Before an investment is made in a particular area, industry or asset, the investment manager must properly research the historically record uh, and returns that that potential investment has offered and analyze the investment strength and weaknesses, opportunities and threats. He must be familiar with the local and global economic climates and take cognizance of factors that may influence them. The investment manager must have the necessary personal and systems in place to assist him with the necessary research and valuation techniques to offer the value to the fund. Then uh, another role player is your investment consultant. Uh, he provides independent and objective advice to the trustees, advise trustees on a suitable investment policy, recommend to trustees on a suitable investment strategy, assist trustees in choosing and appointing an investment managers, uh, he monitors fund uh, compliance with investment regulations, review the investment mandates and agreements, monitor the fund's investment results uh, relative to the benchmarks and peers at the portfolio and fund level, and advise trustees and investment matters generally and keep uh, trustees abreast of any market developments. Uh, another role player is the fund evaluator or actuary uh, appointed uh, according to section 9A of the Act. Every retirement fund shall appoint an actuary as evaluator, provided that such an appointment shall be considered provisional and be of no force until the registrar has approved the appointment in writing. The appointed evaluator is responsible for valuing the fund's liabilities and the fund assets for actuarial purposes according to generally accepted actuarial practices and producing a report thereupon. Uh, the appointed evaluator should bring the registrar's notice to any practice or irregularities which he considers might harm the member's interest and on the termination of his appointment by the retirement fund bring the registrar's attention to any regularities that he is aware of or which might prejudice members of the fund. Uh, the evaluator's primary duty is to evaluate the financial soundness of the fund by valuing assets and liabilities and recommend uh, to the fund on the following, uh, on the contributions that are required to fund the benefits, to the financial soundness of the benefits, the interest of members in the fund uh, where those apply uh, to one member or extend to all members as in the case of a takeover or a merger, the rate at which the fund commutes pension fund benefits for cash, the increase can be granted to pensioners, um, the amount of past service that can be recognized in the fund in return 
for the benefits brought into the fund, usually from a pension fund by new members, bonus declarations for defined contribution funds, the conversion valuation, asset liability matching, and the reserve calculations for def uh, defined benefit funds. Uh, the further role of the actuary um, is to adm admittedly uh, that there are few purely technical issues in the defined contribution fund. The member who faces the risk uh, qualify advice. The possible areas for the actuary involvement here are a fund design by considering alternative designs for different objectives, the effect of future conditions of these benefits that can be assessed, uh, accessed uh, to access the risk. Uh, targeting of one benefit has implication for benefits arising in other situations. Impact of future cash flows for the employer and linkages to recruitment, uh, staff turnover and salary progression. Statutory valuations, review of the continued ability of the fund to meet its original obligations or objectives. Uh, illustrate of benefits, investment selection and risk management, design of investment vehicles and annual interest uh, declarations. The further uh, role of the actuary uh, as the risk are transferred to the employee, there is a greater need for advice for members and the trustees and some of the other duties are to prepare and present to the trustees the annual financial review of the fund, provide provisional actuarial advice to the trustees on any issue that may adversely affect the solvency and or the financial position of the fund, provide professional actuarial advice to the trustees on the transfer issues, including the signing of relevant legal documents about transfer, uh, provide professional actuarial advice and assistance with strategic assets allocations and the investment strategy, considering the fund's liabilities, expenses, and projected benefit obligations as set by the fund and provide signed documentation that the fund investment policy and investment strategy are appropriate and cognizant and consistent with the objectives uh, of the fund. Then another role player is the fund auditor. Section 9 of the Act deals with the issue of fund audits as follows. One, Every retirement fund shall appoint an auditor for its business, provided that such appointment shall be considered provisional and be of no force until the registrar has approved the appointment in writing. An application for approval for the appointment of the auditor shall be made in terms of the Act within 30 days from the date of provisional appointment of the auditor. It is the auditor's fiduciary duty to ensure that the necessary books of accounts, annual financial statements, Auditor reports, many of which must be submitted to the registrar each year, are drafted following appropriate generally accepted accounting practices that complies with the Act. The annual financial statement should be fairly represented uh, at the financial state of affairs of the fund. Ideally, the auditor should meet the trustees before commencement uh, of an audit to discuss and review the audit objectives and procedures to ensure that all areas are properly dealt with. The report must contain an expression of opinion of, on the financial soundness of the fund. The auditor must also ensure that the fund's investments, administration, turnaround times follow the fund's rules and the agreed service levels. Uh, where an insurer is the fund administrator, the auditor must be satisfied and certify that the insurer accounting system and controls are adequate for the retirement fund administration and that such administration is carried out in compliance with the provision of the Act. The systems and controls must be able to determine whether or not contributions to the fund have been made timely in terms of the Act. An auditor of a fund must, a within 21 days of his or her appointment is uh, terminated, other than following Section 8, submit a written report to the Registrar dealing with the auditor's perceived reason for the termination. If the auditor but for termination referred to in paragraph A would have had reasons to submit a report contemplated in Section 45.3 of the Auditing Professions Act of 2005, Act Number 26, 
of 2005 submit such a report to the registrar and C on becoming aware of any matter relating to the affairs of the pension fund which in the opinion of the auditor may prejudice the fund or its members uh, inform the registrar thereof in writing. Right, another role player is the employer. The employer plays a critical role in running the fund. Cert, uh, certain fiduciary duties arise because the employer has, by establishing the fund, agreed with the employees to help provide for their retirement and because their money contributed to the fund, both the employer and the employee uh, constitute trust money. Uh, for these reasons, the most important fiduciary duty owned by the employer to the fund is the duty to act with the utmost good faith, care and diligence when dealing with the affairs of the fund and to exercise his authority fairly and reasonably. The employer must be valid in his desire to establish a fund, a fund established as a tax evasion fund and designed to enrich the owner of the business or in the employer, besides being illegal, would be a very serious breach of fiduciary duties with very serious industrial relationship consequences if and when uh, uncovered. The employer is thus uh, expected to exercise his fiduciary duty amongst others when, number one, designing benefit structures and setting up the fund in consultation with the trustees, two, appointing the employer trustees, three, making or deducting and submitting contributions to the fund, four, ensuring that all eligible employees join the fund, five, ensuring that members are not allowed to leave the fund or receive benefits from it unless they are genuinely leaving his service, and six, the employer must operate fully with uh, the trustees and the administrators uh, of the fund especially applies with regard to furnishing details of salary uh, increases, changes in status, marriage status, additions and or submissions to families and staff turnover. This kind of information must be supplied as soon as any changes occur. Uh, there are also a duty on the employer to ensure that the fund is being properly managed and eight an unreasonable restraint of trustees, the discretion or interference with the trustees in the performance of their duties by the employer is unacceptable. Uh, the trustees have been placed in the position to do a particular, often onerous job and they should be left to do it as they see fit. The employer must monitor the work done by the trustees and their performance and intervene where such performance is not up to standard. But this is very different from being unreasonable and any unnecessary interference from the employer. The employer must be particularly careful not to place or be seen to place pressure on fund trustees, especially those who are also his employees concerning any decision regarding the fund. It would be gross abuse of power and fiduciary duty for an employer to use his power as the employer to, co to coerce fund trustees in any way. Uh, the employer is often placed in a difficult position because there is always going to be a conflict between providing meaningful benefits and the cost of doing so. However, the employer must always keep in mind that he stands in a fiduciary relationship to the fund and that he must provide his staff with meaningful benefits if he can afford them. Once the employer recognizes that the fund is a separate entity, not simply simply another business asset and that the contributions by the employer to the fund are part of a member's remuneration, the conflict of interest does exist, will lessen uh, considerably. Uh, another role player is your fund administrator. The fund administrator are re uh, required to uh, register before they undertake the administration of the retirement funds. The fund administrator is responsible for efficient running of the administration of the fund. It is pivotal a link between the member, the employer, the trustee, the insurer, the investment man manager, the evaluator, the auditor, and so on. Uh, the provision of this con uh, continuity between these various persons is more than merely a fiduciary duty. Uh, it's integral to the very performance of the administrator's function. 
Should any of the various persons responsible for the fund not perform properly, the administrator must either correct the situation or he must seek uh, assistance. The, uh, the administrator must ensure that a all eligible employees are in fact members of the fund. B, in terms of the act, it monitors the payment of contribution by the employer to the administrator. The payment must occur within the specific stipulated time, uh, which we have discussed earlier, which is seven days. If the employer does not pay the contribution within this period, the administrator must inform the fund's principal officer of the non-payment, who in turn should then advise the registrar. The necessary documentation regarding the admission of new members is obtained from the member employer uh, and advised uh, to the insurer or the investment manager where applicable. Uh, documentation regarding the cessation of membership is obtained from the member, the employers, and advised to the insurer or the investment manager where applicable. An adequate record of members and employer participation in the fund is maintained to accurately determine any benefits accruing to members. The timeliest payment of benefits due to members or other interested parties on a cessation of participation and that uh, it obtains the necessary resources from the insurer or investment manager for this purpose. Compliance with the fund rules with any statutes and regulations affecting the operation of the fund and with any contracts and policies to which the fund is party. Timeliest referral of any matters requiring the attention of any other officer of the fund, in particular the administrator should make regular and detailed reports to trustees of all material matters such as membership profiles, membership movements, uh, benefit payments made and any contributions received. Another uh, role player here is the benefits consultant. The consultant is an important link between the various officers and members of the fund, the insurer, if any, and the employer. As such, he often serves as a vital role in advising the employer and, when necessary, the trustees on numerous aspects regarding uh, retirement funds, such as aspects which include uh, discussing matters uh, as the financial operations of the fund, investments, the impact of factors like HIV AIDS could have on the fund in general. Discuss and advise on the benefit structure, how current benefits compare with other alternatives, new products, market trends and suggest suitable amendments to the fund rules where applicable. Advise on insurance policies and insurance matters. A consultant would be guilty of negligence if you fail to advise the trustees on insurance policy conditions, limitations and exclusions, uh, advise on relevant legislative changes and how these will affect uh, the fund's operation, uh, advise on possible industrial relation consequences of rule amendments or discriminatory practices currently entrenched in the rules which could subsequently be challenged on constitutional grounds, Ensure that the benefits of the fund design is precisely what the employer, the board of trustees and the members seek to achieve by establishing the fund. And the consultant also serves a vital role uh, in advising the employer, the board of trustees and the fund members on issues regarding retirements, withdrawals, taxation principles, continued compliance with the rules of the fund uh, by the trustees, administrator and so on. Generally, every consultant has a fiduciary duty to perform the mandate given to him by his clients as expeditiously as possible and always to act in the client's best interest. In some respect, the consultant also acts as a watchdog, chasing up the various officers of the fund and ensuring that they all are doing their duties efficiently and timelessly. To this effect, the consultant, in conjunction with the trustees, should initiate and attend regular meetings of the various offices of the fund. How often these meetings are held will depend on circumstances such as makeup of the fund, the investment portfolio, member profiles, and so on, all which can change. Therefore, meetings must be held 
as frequently as necessary, subject to a minimum as stipulated by legislation. But another role player uh, that we find here is the life assurance company. Uh, vitally, uh, all retirement fund provide a benefit or benefits payable on death or disability of a member whilst in service of the employer. The trustee of a small or medium-sized fund will generally fully insure this benefit with a life insurance company so that in event of the death or disability of, uh, of a member, the trustee will receive a form of life insurance company, a payment uh, which precisely matches their liability. On the other hand, a larger retirement fund may insure none or only part of the death benefit and instead pay the full or remaining part of the death, uh, death benefits from the assets you know, from the fund. Uh, then another role player is the Financial Sector Conduct Authority or the FSCA and the Prudential Authority, uh, which is the South African Reserve Bank. The FSCA mandate is to enhance the efficiency and integrity of financial markets, uh, promote fair uh, customer treatment by financial institutions, provide financial education, and promote financial literacy and assist in the maintain maintenance of financial stability. The Prudential Authority, or the Reserve Bank, is the regulator responsible for setting policies and prudential regulatory re requirements, and the supervisor responsible for overseeing compliance with the regulatory requirements of financial institutions that provide financial products, security services, and market infrastructure. The Financial Sector Conduct Authority, the FSCA, is responsible for market conduct, regulation, and supervision. The FCA uh, aims to enhance and support the efficiency and the integrity of the financial markets and protect financial customers by promoting their fair treatment by financial institutions and providing financial customers with financial education. The FCA will further assist uh, in the maintaining of financial stability. Then another role player is the Office of the Pension Fund Adjudicator. The Office of the Pension Fund Adjudicator is a statutory body established in terms of Section 30B of the Pension Funds Act 24 of 1956. Section 30B entrusts the responsibility of carrying out the mandate to the Pension Fund Adjudicator and the Deputy Adjudicators. Adjudicators and or Deputy Adjudicators are appointed by the Minister of Finance in consultation with the FECA. Uh, the mission of o PFA, uh, the uh, Office of the Pension Fund Adjudicator, is to resolve complaints in terms of the act to uphold the integrity uh, of the pension fund industry and to protect the interests of pension fund members. Uh, the mandate is to resolve financial services complaints in the procedurally fair, economic and expeditious manner. Uh, the Office of the Pension Fund Adjudicator is there uh, for the complainant who have and be any person uh, who uh, claims to be a member or a former member of a fund, a beneficiary or former beneficiary of a fund, an employer who participates in a fund, a spouse or a former spouse or a member of a former member of a fund, any group of persons referred to in paragraph 1, 2, 3 and 4 above, a uh, board of fund or members of funds thereof, or any person who has an interest uh, or lay a complaint. A complaint means a complaint of a complainant relating to the administration of the fund, the investments of its fund, or the interpretation and application of its rules, and alleging that a decision of the fund or any purportedly taken in terms of the rules was more than the powers that the fund or the improper exercise of its powers, that the complainant has sustained or may sustain prejudice in consequence of maladministration of the fund by the or any person, whether by act or omission, that the dispute of fact or law has arisen concerning the fund between the fund or any person and the complainant, and an employer who participates in the fund has not fulfilled their duties in terms of the fund rules. Then the last two uh, participants or role players here is the South African 
Revenue Services. Uh, SARS is responsible for collecting and administering all national taxes, duties and levies. Uh, SARS administers the tax affairs relating to deducting retirement fund contributions and calculating tax payable when benefits become due and payable to the members or the beneficiaries. Uh, and the last role player we want to mention here is South African banks, uh, which then facilitate payments of contribution of benefits. Um, as you would have noticed, uh, we have now finished uh, our session uh, on Class 4, uh, Retirement Fund Benefits. Uh, this was quite a lengthy uh, session. And again, uh, it needs to be taken seriously because this is part of your function as a representative uh, to customers out there. Uh, I trust that uh, the sessions that we have done was helpful and it would be uh, in preparation of your exam that you need to write. The exam you need to write will consist of 40 multiple choice questions. Uh, these will be randomized uh, throughout the 11 units that we've covered uh, in this session. Uh, you will have uh, 80 minutes to complete the exam. That gives you about two minutes per question. Uh, you can also, when you write the exam, it is e electronically online. So when you start your exam, please make sure that you have 40 minutes available, uh, 80 minutes, I mean, available uh, to sit down without interruptions. Uh, because when the counter on that clock starts with the exam, uh, we can't stop it. It will run for the 80 minutes. And uh, if you uh, don't finish in the 80 minutes, the system will then cut off after 80 minutes and will start marking the exam. You can also select questions to answer if you don't have the answer to a specific question and then come back to the questions. Uh, best wishes on the exams that you need to take. And thank you for listening uh, to these presentations. We trust that it helped and that it will be in preparation for your final exam. Thank you very much and goodbye.